Hi and welcome to Biostock. Alligator has just presented interim data for Mita Salamab and CEO Søren Bregenolt is here with us today to tell us more. Welcome. Thank you, Olivia. It's a pleasure. Could you first tell us a bit about Mita Salamab? Yeah, Mita Salamab is our second generation immune stimulating CD40 agonist that we have developed. So it uh, delivers uh, immune stimulation in the tumor, but not elsewhere in the body to give it a very strong uh, efficacy safety profile, making it uh, very well suited for combination with, uh, for instance, chemotherapy in uh, diseases, so solid tumors like uh, pancreatic cancer. And why pancreatic cancer? Uh, many reasons. Uh, first of all, pancreatic cancer is a, a horrific disease with uh, very, very poor prognosis and uh, almost no uh, other uh, modalities available than chemotherapy. So the unmet medical need is high and, and we believe metacellumab can make a difference in pancreatic cancer. And you just concluded an interim analysis. Could you tell us a bit about the data? Yeah, so so the analysis that we just concluded was uh, really a, a so-called uh, futility analysis on Optimize 1, which is a phase 2 study in pancreatic cancer, first-line pancreatic uh, cancer patients. So if we can see here, the first drug that uh, that the patients actually see when after diagnosis is metazolumab, and then the, the patients get on, on repeated cycles of metazolumab in combination with fulfurinox, which is the the standard of care chemotherapy for the for the best performing uh, for the best performing patients and the study has been designed so that now uh, at uh, at this point we are have reached uh, 23 patients in the study uh, that that can be evaluated and uh, and that's the data that we that we present uh, today and that is of course a, a key point in the study because when when we look at uh, at the potential outcomes uh, if if the drug itself is not better than chemotherapy, uh, then there's no real reason to uh, to continue the study. Hence, if uh, if we saw a, a so-called objective response rate, the number of patients that actually respond below 30%, then we would uh, stop the study. Uh, on the other hand, if we uh, if we reached a uh, more than 50% of the patients actually responding to the drug, then we believe that there is an opportunity to uh, to engage uh, regulators and start uh, talks about how to accelerate the trial. And we, of course, all all uh, waiting these data in uh, in uh, with, with a lot of uh, excitement. And if we look at the treatment landscape out there, as I said, the pancreatic cancer patients they have two options for chemotherapy: nisetabin with uh, paclitaxel, where approximately 23-24% of the patients actually respond to treatment and then fulfurinox where we have approximately 32% of the patient uh, responding to the treatment. So that's that's pretty meager numbers in uh, in this disease. What we saw in, uh, in, in the study was that when we then combined uh, metazolumab and fulfurinox, we reached uh, a response rate above uh, 50% and we are extremely satisfied with uh, with these data they really bodes well for the for the future of metazolumab and if we take a, a little bit closer look at uh, at some of the other other data we can see that on safety we were able to uh, reconfirm what we saw in the in the phase 1b uh, part of the study uh, that the drug is safe and well tolerable uh, even in combination with fulfurinox as I said, an objective response rate of, uh, of 52%. And then when we combine uh, those patients that respond to the drug, also with this, those patients that have disease stabilization, we see a so-called uh, disease control rate of uh, above 90%. That's really, really uh, exciting data. Uh, and we are so pleased uh, in, uh, in, in the big team that have been working with this for the last couple of years. What is your strategy going forward now when you have these results? Yeah, I mean, now, now we have a drug that, that we know works in patients uh, that, uh, that gives a, a lot of responsibility to the organization that we now have to, uh, to move this drug forward uh, as diligently, as fast and, and, and professionally as we can. So, of course, we have to, uh, to finalize uh, this phase two study, optimize one. We still uh, guide that we expect phase or fa these top line results uh, first quarter of 24. We will uh, look forward to that uh, eagerly. Then uh, we will, during 23, initiate uh, dialogue with regulators, both in the US and in the EU, and say what, uh, what opportunities are there for an accelerated uh, development and uh, an approval pathway for, uh, 
for, uh, for metacellumab in pancreatic cancer. And of course, there's also uh, uh, opportunities for often drug designations and, uh, and other uh, regulatory incentives. Then we will continue uh, with all the other activities, CMC and uh, so on and so forth, to ensure that the drug is uh, is is ready for phase three development when we uh, when we get to a finalization of phase two to ensure that we we move the drug fast uh, as fast uh, forward as fast as possible, and then of course we will uh, continue the dialogue with uh, with potential pharma partners on. Uh, on co-development and potential licensing agreement with uh, with Metasalumab. So all in all, a uh, very, very strong set of data that uh, reconfirms our and my own personal belief in Metasalumab and sets a very clear path for how we will develop the drug in pancreatic cancer in the, in the years to come. And do you have enough resources to run these next steps? Uh, biotech companies per design never have, uh, have enough resources, Olivia, but uh, uh, as, as we announced uh, in, uh, during Q4, uh, we, will, uh, we will need to refinance Alligator during the first half of, uh, of, uh, of 2023. And uh, we believe that uh, with these data, we have a strong fundament to, uh, to do so, because now we are investing in a drug that we actually know will make a clinical difference for patients with hard to treat cancers. And uh, could you tell, tell us a bit more about the accelerated development pathway? Yeah, I mean there are, there are many uh, there are many opportunities uh, to do that. Uh, it uh, it of course depends on uh, on having strong data. And and before we get uh, get into a concrete discussion with uh, with the audience here, it's important that we first and foremost uh, get the dialogue with the regulators going, see that uh, that the full data from the trial uh, show or we confirms that what what we've discussed today, and then we can uh, can start discussing in uh, in detail. Twenty twenty three has just started. What can we expect from Alligator this year? Oh yeah, that's a, that's a very interesting question. 2023 is going to be pretty busy for Alligator. Of course, we have to ensure that we finalize Optimize 1, Mr. Selma and Pancreatic Cancer. Uh, we are getting ready for, uh, for a second phase two study, as, as we've been discussing. Uh, that will take a lot of resources in our clean regulatory team. Uh, on uh, on uh, discovery and preclinical, we have to uh, continue our development with NeoX Prime, our uh, third generation CD40 agonists, uh, and you know we've recently uh, announced uh, an expansion of a collaboration with Orion that will also uh, require a significant focus in the organization. And then uh, fourthly, we have uh, 527, our 41 BB 5T4 bispecific antibody that we are co-developing with Aptivo. Uh, we are looking forward to enroll the first patients in uh, in the phase one study during January. So. Uh, 2023 is going to be uh, very, very busy, but hopefully also as successful as 2022 for Alligator. It will be interesting to follow. And uh, thank you for watching this interview with Alligator Bioscience. And thank you, Saren, for joining us in the studio. Thank you, Olivia.